Hello and welcome to another season of high school football and football Friday night. I'm Nathan Palm with Zach Hughes and we'll be with you from now until the season wraps up in December, hopefully with some local teams hoisting some championship trophies. Yeah, we're excited for the start of another high school football season. I know I talked about it a lot last year. I didn't come till October. Yep. It was a little hot yep. out there for me tonight. I was sweating <laughs> yes. a little bit. But, for uh, all of us. It, it was fun. It was good to get football started. And one team that's hoping to be in state playoff contention is the Thompson Bulldogs, who made it to the Georgia Dome last season for the first time since 2002. Yeah, and they began that journey with a week one game again against Laney. Now, last year in that game, well, here we go, Christian Tut and company. He's a senior now, believe it or not, facing Laney Wildcats. The Bulldogs 16-1 all-time in this series. Laney lost this one 45-0 last year, but it was Christian Tut who set the tone. Second play from scrimmage. Nice wrap-up on Laney's stud. Mario Sumter, Thompson gets the ball, and they like to run it. Always a good running team. Last year it was Billy Mance, or actually uh, this year, Bubba Murray taking over the starting duties, punching it in for the first score of the season. Next possession, it's Murray again up the middle, 72 yards all the way for his second touchdown of the quarter. Thompson rolls in its opener, 50-0 against Laney. Just down the road in Aquinas, the kids going wild for the Irish fifth-year coach. James Leonard took the blame for a disappointing 6-5 and five season last year, saying he made some changes, changes to the offensive scheme. Tough first test against second-ranked Christian or Prince Avenue Christian senior George Welch. Said he was excited for the new offense he was going to get more screen passes, and he took advantage here. Big gain. Aquinas still trailing 21-7 in the second. Long drive down to the two-yard line. Fourth and goal. Joseph Douglas gets stuck in the backfield. No score for the Irish, but it gets the ball back just before half with Crimmins Hankinson, one of the best kickers in the state. Nails a 38-yarder to pull Aquinas within 11. However, the Irish can't close the gap. It falls 35-17 tonight. Cross Creek hosting Butler. The Razorbacks are coming off their first playoff appearance since 2007. Narrowly beat Butler 20-18 last year. Third quarter, Butler with the ball. They don't have rosters at the game or on max prep, so we'll go with number one quarterback. He's intercepted by Jordan Hickman. Cross Creek couldn't get anything going offensively, though, on Friday fourth quarter now. Devin Hicks scrambles. He fumbles. Butler would take possession, and the Bulldogs go on to win final score 18 to nothing. One more game to get to in Richmond County tonight. Hefsabah hosting Jenkins County. Eagles won this match of 41-18 last year. First quarter, Jenkins County had the ball, but that pass is intercepted by Greg Williamson. Nice return there to set up the Rebels, but later Raekwon Riley fumbles. Jenkins County able to recover, so ensuing drive, Stefan Robertson scrambles in for the touchdown. There was a flag on the play, though, and it was called back, but later no problem for Jenkins County. Robert Coney takes it in. That put Jenkins County up 7-0, and they win 33-10 over Hefsabah tonight. All right, let's head down south now, down Highway 25, where Grovetown and Burke County met for just the second time ever. The Bears got the best of Damian Postel's team to open last season, 29-7. Coach Eric Parker starting his 11th season at Burke County, the third longest tenured coach in 4A. Burke County up big already, 28 to nothing in the third quarter. Jalen Odom, nice run for a first down. And then Burke County punching it in for a touchdown for another score in this one later in the third. 35 to seven, Burke. Taylor Youngblood, he's got some experience. And look at that long ball to Michael Santos. Beautiful play for the touchdown. But Burke County, too much on their home turf. Diamond Green runs in another for a touchdown as Burke County rolls 41 to seven over Grovetown. Back up in Columbia County now with a matchup we've had on Game Night Live the past couple seasons. Lakeside hosting North Augusta. The Panthers student section pumped up for the opener. We pick it up in the first quarter. No score. Darius Gibson scampers in from 10 yards out. The extra point was no good though, so North Augusta led 6 to nothing. The Yellow Jackets defense also, also played huge tonight. Jackson Crook Makes a huge tackle for loss. They kept the Panthers in check all night long. And then later in the quarter, Landon Washington hits Dewan Bell in stride for a 59-yard touchdown. And North Augusta rolls to a 37-0 win, their seventh straight win in this series. In single-A action, Warren County hosting Putnam County, screaming Devils open last season with a 14-0 win. 
in this game. Putnam County with the ball. Simone Petit looking deep. But Contravius Brinkley, great name, great return on the interception to set Warren County up, but they were unable to score. So next possession for Putnam, Jaquarius Walker punches it in from five yards out to put the War Eagles up 7 to nothing. And then less than a minute left in the first, Warren County trying to tie it up. Bovesia Carroll throws across the field to Brinkley for a huge gain. Nice play there. But Warren County falls to Putnam County. Final score 21 to 6. Well, we are just getting started here on the first week of Football Friday Night. Yeah, lots of teams still don't start their seasons until next Friday, but still many of our teams in action tonight. So we've got a packed 30 minute show for you per usual, including Silver Bluff and South Aiken on Game Night Live and two of South Carolina's best, Bardwell and Williston Elko. That's coming up next on Football Friday Night. Supporting high school athletics, McDonald's, proud sponsor of football Friday night. 